Um, obviously, the black community is hurting over this. Um, but I think that it's important that we put things in perspective. I gave a closing comment on, on, on my Sports Center show last night. And, you know, you feel, for, first of all, for her family, her loved ones. She's dead. She's gone. She was 26 years of age. She was unarmed. She was in her apartment. And the fact that she ended up dead is just as tragic as it gets. So I hear where LeBron James is coming from. I hear where all of these athletes are coming from. I'm sure the world has heard where I'm coming from as well on this and what have you. But having said all of that, you don't want to use the words light at the end of the tunnel because she's gone and there is no light for her. But if we really, really want to address this with the fervor that it deserves, let's make sure we point our fingers in the right direction. The officers had a legal search warrant. They had a legal search warrant because once upon a time, according and we just had our researcher here, y'all know Chuck Solitaro and the yes. research department, they're on top of everything for us, so we're good to go. Yes. Here's the specific point that folks need to understand. The important part to mention is that the police got the warrant to Breonna Taylor's apartment because they say they once saw her ex-boyfriend leave her apartment with a package. That's how they got the warrant. They had the warrant because they had reason to suspect her ex-boyfriend was hiding drugs and or money there, which is potential evidence. So they went to the premises with a legal search warrant. Now, the issue comes into question because the police are saying they knocked and they identified themselves in a state where there are no knock warrants allowed. So they didn't have to identify themselves, but because they said they did, and there was one corroborating witness who validated that they identified themselves, even though there were 12 other witnesses that swore otherwise, okay? The Attorney General of the state of Kentucky, Mr. Daniel Cameron, decides to side with who is a black man, who decides to go on that one person that said they heard the police identify themselves so the no-knock warrant didn't apply here. And as black people, here's what we're looking at. We're looking at the fact that an innocent, unarmed woman ended up dead, period. Just like black men, George Floyd and others who were unarmed, dead, period. That's how we're looking at it. From an emotional perspective, yes. From laws needing to be changed, yes. From the position of the police officer, the boyfriend who was in attendance, Kenneth Walker, swears that he did not hear, swears rather that he did not hear the police identify themselves. And so when they busted into his property, okay, he shot one police officer in the leg. And obviously the police officers supposedly returned fire, and that's how Breonna Taylor ended up getting shot and killed. What I would like the NBA players, what I would like NFL players, what I would like the entire sports world, from the commissioners to the owners, on down to executives, to the players, to society as a whole, to recognize is where the real problem lies. The real problem lies in the law. Because let me read something to you, Max Kellerman. Stand your ground, laws. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Okay, Trayvon Martin. Mm -hmm. Do you know that 35 states have stand your ground laws in place. One of them's Kentucky. At least 16 or 17 states have a license to carry. One of them's Kentucky. And then you combine that with a no knock warrant state like Kentucky? That's a powder keg. Mm -hmm. You're telling me that somebody can knock on my door, bust in my door, never identify themselves as police officers, and in that same state, I have a license to carry, and I have stand your ground laws? That's a, that's a recipe for disaster. The point that I'm trying to make is, we need to know that, and when we're addressing this issue <clears throat> and really talking about provoking and ultimately implementing the change we all covet, you can start right there. You can get those laws eradicated immediately. You can push your state legislators to address that. You can lobby to have those things change, Max. Because if you do that, then when something like this happens, 
you don't have, at least in some people's eyes, you don't have an attorney general that appears to be handcuffed because these are the laws in the state yeah. that he has to capitulate to. Now, there are others who make an argument against him on that point, and I'm not equipped to debate that one way or the other because I just don't know. We're learning all of this as we go along. But what I will say is that it is clearly obvious that to some degree he felt handcuffed because of the laws that clearly favored the police officers who had a legal search warrant. And since there was no footage, no video, and that's another <laughs> issue for another day, what he had to go on is what he went on. These are the laws that need to be addressed. And when you talk about really, really creating change, that's how you can do it, by attacking these laws and getting them eradicated. Floor is yours. And how do you do that, Stephen A.? One way. Vote. Vote. I want to talk about that. Sure. What you brought up about Breonna Taylor's ex-boyfriend, this is uh, frequently a narrative in the media when something like this happens, when there is a prevailing sense, particularly among African Americans, but not just among African Americans, that um, there, there hasn't been justice served. Um, a demonization of the victim occurs, and people will say, They'll, they'll go into the past and they'll find something that suggests this person isn't perfect. And parenthetically, the, the implication is, hey, what can you expect? They had it coming or it's OK. Mm -hmm. What I would say is there seems to be a much higher tolerance for that among many Americans. The acceptance of that when the victim is black. Mm -hmm. What if the victim were white? And what black people seem to be reacting to today, what I feel today, is that there is supposed to be equal protection under the law. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.